Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and that's it really I suppose that's not the whole recording I do have a Facebook page devoted to this I say devoted but it's basically if you go to Facebook and put let me bore you to sleep the page will come up and you can just like the page and and you can send me comments and messages and tell me how wonderful I am and bake cakes in the shape of my feet I, I don't know whatever you want really so I went out today so action packed isn't really the right word Zzz. But I did go out. I went out yesterday as well. I want to say I went out today. I realise it's now the day after. But I can't be bothered thinking about that. For me it's still Thursday. The 22nd. But it's actually the 23rd. No it's not. No. Oh, wait a minute. No, 23rd, Friday. Saturday's the 24th. Sunday's the 25th. Monday's the 26th. So, yeah. It is, blimey. So, 23rd today. Because 26th is my birthday on Monday. Monday. What, you want to know how you can send me a birthday present? Really? I didn't expect to hear that. I suppose you could. Um, you could gift me on PayPal. Uh, what's that? What's the address for that? Really? You want to know that as well? Okay. If, you, if I must tell you. It's paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. But you know, it's my... I'll be 49 49 Wow The thing is I've noticed As I got older I seem to Age myself So for the last 6 months I've been 49 I'm turning into an old fogey I'm literally turning into one of those Really elderly people that you meet on a bus or at the bus stop that says that say to you I'm 94 you know I'm 94 like okay that's great but can you just give me the ticket for the bus just drive the bus please you know it's kind of like I've now turned into that and I use it as an excuse as well you know, like yesterday I was moaning about uh, my lack of money, saying 49 years and I've got four pence. <laughs> and if the, I, I use it as well, sort of, um, not arguments, because I don't have arguments, but just like sort of, I've been alive for 49 years. I know, you know. I've got experience. 49 years of experience. It's really boring. <laughs> I've got to stop doing it. The thing is, on Tuesday, I'll be able to start saying, I'm 50, you know. I'm 50. 50 years old. I'm f don't talk to... I'm a, I'm a 50-year-old man. I could be your grandfather. Like... Dad, you couldn't be your dad. Stop it. I could be your grandfather. 
50. I'm looking forward to getting to 50 just so I can phone my dad up and say, what's it like to have a son who's 50 years old? <laughs> what's that like? What's it feel like to have a 50-year-old son? 50 years old. And he'll probably say, well, actually, I've had a 50-year-old son for over four years. So I've got an older brother, and I. And then, the, then they'll like be, oh, actually, I've got a 50 year four year old son. Oh, it takes away the, uh, the thing, the stingy thing, the sticky thingy thing that's sticky in my thing that gets sticky when I sing. So, I don't know what that was. Sometimes I talk and I, I kind of think, well, that might rhyme with something. I think maybe there's like a little inner rapper within me. Like a, like a, a little hidden M&M. Maybe I call myself Skittles or something. And I kind of like, oh, I want to rhyme stuff. But unfortunately, my rhymes don't make any sense. Or they just sound the same. Like, you know, my rhymes don't make any sense. I like to smell incense. Which cost me in 1999, 84 pence. If I had a time machine, then that would what I was used to recompense my elements then then you just yeah and then I just like try and run with underpants even though it's a different kind of word but <sighs> so yeah I today I didn't stay up late I've just recorded a recording it's brilliant. Oh, you should listen to it. Oh, Deep Sleep Whisper 134. It's amazing. 25 minutes long. It's just, oh. <laughs> I get aroused just thinking about it. No, I don't. It is quite good. It's quite a good recording. And they're all quite good, really. Apart from these ones, but they're, they're you know. I did, yeah, my, the one I did yesterday as well for the relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety, panic attacks, I was really pleased with that one, and I don't normally kind of get too excited about anything really, but I didn't get, I mean, I didn't get excited, I didn't start doing handstands and shouting out the window. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Juju petals, juju petals. Oh, I just want to live again. I don't, don't, you know, don't can't get all kind of. That's from It's a Wonderful Life. That that little bit there. My favourite film of all time. Um. It's one of my favourite films. Big One's number four. That was... <laughs> that's my... <laughs> no, it's not. Um, so... I got up. I didn't get up early. Like, yeah, the day before I woke up at quite early. But this... Today, or yesterday, but let's say today... Today, when I woke up, it was, I set my alarm for one o'clock, because I had an appointment at four, but I got up about twelve, so I had my breakfast, 
Actually, I was just about to listen to my Earl Nightingale recording uh, that I listen to every day. Well, I try to, and it's like really positive recording. I'm trying to sort of trying to increase my positivity by listening to positive things, reading positive things, and you know, just healing my brain and we can you know, making new neural connections and just you know that stuff all that stuff and all that groovy groovy stuff so I'm sitting there at my laptop one of the first things I do when I get up well the process of getting up really for me is I I put all my weight onto my right hand to sort of manoeuvre my body so it's up and then I put my feet on the floor usually I think I put my right foot on the floor first and then my left foot <laughs> sometimes I misjudge not not the floor bit but I misjudge and I'm closer to the edge than I realise and I've nearly fallen out of the bed in fact I have fallen out of the bed a couple of times where I've gone to put all my weight on my right hand and I'm actually right on the edge of the bed so I ended up like slipping out but slipping out's not bad I mean you can always kind of it's about just getting back inside again isn't it you slip out so I kind of managed to get up um in the past I have slept slipped out of bed while I've been asleep and I just managed to get back into bed and slip back in nice and warm and cosy and just you know try and stay there for as long as possible but I don't fall out of bed as much as I used to because I'm in a double bed now not now I'm in a, I'm in a, a big black squeaky chair but I used to be in a single bed most of my life. By that, I don't mean I was always in a bed all my life. I used to walk around and do stuff. But when I was asleep, I was very, very much in a single bed. And I hope I never have to go back to that. I really hope I never have to go back to that. Because I love having a double bed. I love. I love having a double bed. I mean, love it. I love it. I love it so much. And I'm lucky because I'm not very tall. This is the only time it's okay. Because people say it doesn't matter how tall you are. Uh, doesn't matter how... It, what's, what's this saying? Doesn't matter how tall you are when you're in bed. And they're right, because my feet don't go over the edge unless I kind of manoeuvre myself down, which is not really a lot of point. But sometimes I do. I'll hold on to the top of the mattress. So I'll lay on my tummy, and I'll, and I'll hold on to the top of the mattress, and I'll kind of manoeuvre myself down a bit, and so my toes are over the edge and I kind of pull my feet so stretch my legs and then pull a little bit on my arms so I can stretch my back ever so pleasant sometimes but uh, I like having a double bed because usually you know I don't fall out of it like I used to with the singles I'm not saying that I always fell out of bed with a single bed it wasn't like it didn't happen all the time but it did sometimes happen um, but with a double bed oh it's nice it's really oh it's lovely and I think really apart from the carpet it's the most one of the most expensive things I've ever bought 
because I think it cost me about £600. The carpet was about £600 as well. 700 something like that. So it was you know, it's a few years back that I bought it, uh, when I first moved in here, to this flat. But I like my bed. I really do. Oh. So... I don't know why I was talking about my bed. Oh yeah, my routine of getting out of bed. So I do, I put my foot and my left foot down and... Sometimes I'll stretch. Sometimes it's good not to. It's, you know, like I don't necessarily stretch and yawn. I just, just take it easy. Put me slippers on. Well, they're crocs, but they're not. I mean, I mean, they're crocodiles. They're croc. Those like plasticky croc things that are pretty comfortable. Because Andre will just ruin any slipper that I get. And the slip-ons, which is good. I like things that just I can slip into easily. You know, they're nice, nice snug. A nice grip. So it's nice to have something I can slip into that's got a nice grip, but there's not, you know, there's no struggle getting inside them. You know, they just slip on nice, but they do a nice, have a nice grip to them. It's very comfortable. So I go into the bathroom, do a wee, you know. I don't mean to offend anyone, but we all have to do wee wees. And um, yeah, just do like that stuff. And then I I take my tablet for my tummy. So I've got um, my acidy stuff. So I, I take that tablet just because it stops me from getting heartburn. And I have to wait about half hour before I can eat anything. And I've been very disciplined now. It used to be difficult before. Because when I was younger, the first thing I ever did when I got out of bed was eat. You know, I had to eat straight away. I don't, it wasn't drastic. I don't mean I had a, like a, <laughs> some kind of portable breakfast cereal making machine. Um, at the side of my bed like a coffee machine but I just had the I used to wake up with hunger pangs but not anymore so we can we can train ourselves it's weird you know because if you'd have said to me Jason I said yeah and he said well, you know what in 2000 and Whatever year it was, I started taking the tablets. You're not going to be able to eat for half an hour to an hour after waking up. I just said, What's it got to do with you? And he said, Well, I'm just letting you know. I said, Well, if you can tell the future, I don't want that's not the stuff I need to know. It can be lottery numbers. I'm not interested in my diet in 10 years' time. Give me the lottery numbers. Give me some, you know, stocks and shares portfolios. Yeah? Eh? It'd be a bit of a misuse, wouldn't it? Telling people. Oh, by the way, and people say that if he, if someone told me twenty years ago that I'd be voting this way, well, if you're going to predict that, what else can you predict? I can read you like a book. No, you can't. So I know you better than you know yourself. No, you don't. 
There's no smoke without fire. Yes, there is. Whether there is or not, that's no difference. That's that mentality, isn't it? Charity starts at home. There's no smoke without fire. But you know, it's like... I wonder if people actually... think... <laughs> like, actually have a... before they say stuff like that. No, I'm not going to think about it. I've heard other people say it, and I'm just going to repeat it. It makes life a lot more easier. I'm just going to repeat what I've heard and not think for myself. Oh, okay. I suppose it could make life easier. Not thinking. Can't imagine that. Never actually thinking about, you know, things, life, the meaning of what we're doing. Nope, I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. I'm doing it because everyone else does it. Me, 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 me. Okay. Ah, fair enough. But yeah, anyway, I had... Yeah, I was at the laptop. What I normally do is once I've done this stuff. Uh, I check my stats on the laptop. Which takes a lot less time now because I just got, you know, one podcast host, which is Spreaker. All my podcasts are spread all over, but... And that's where they're housed. And that's where I can see the stats. And so I just check to see how it's gone during my sleep. So I woke up today, I think at two o'clock this afternoon, I'd had just about 2,000 downloads so far that day. So in the previous 12 hours, I had 2,000 downloads. This is not bad, is it? And at the time, just before I started this recording, I had over 3,000 for the day. So it's kind of evening out, really, about 3,000 a day, which I'm really pleased about. It's like really... So that excites me. It really excites me. Makes me really happy and excited when I hear about my statistics. It really does give me a buzz. Oh yes, oh yes, indeed. But I like it and I mean, I could look at other stats. For example, iTunes. I can go into the iTunes uh, control center and not the, con- the control center, go into my podcast that are listed on iTunes and it gives a list of how many hundreds of hours each podcast has um, had each month and then how what's the average amount of time um, people have listened for. So perhaps I go to the sleep hypnosis um, podcast, like one of the popular ones, the most popular ones, and I'll maybe get half, uh, I don't know, 300, 300 hours over, you know, July or something, or 415 hours through July. And then it says... Maybe the average person, the average amount of time people would listen would be for maybe 44 minutes. Which means that, because I've got short sessions and long sessions on there, that a lot of people listen to the whole thing. Which is pretty pleasant. So, 
I could look at those, but I really do. Not really do, but really do. Sounds like really do though, doesn't it? I really like your hair. You'd think they were saying, oh, I really like your hair. You have, I, I, you've got a really, no, no, that's not right. I really like your figure. You wouldn't say, you mean, you really, you really like my figure. So what, you like it now or you don't like it? Or just something that you don't like very often? Here's a question. Is it acceptable to say to somebody, like as, I'm talking from a man's perspective, but I'm interested in hearing a woman's answer to this. Is it acceptable to say to a lady, um, I've never done it, not seriously anyway, I might have done it as a joke, but to say, oh, you have a lovely figure I wonder if it's if it's acceptable to say that to somebody. I've never, I've never done it other than just as a joke. Um, not not. I mean, like with a friend saying, "Oh, what a lovely figure you have," and just you know, at weddings and stuff like that. You know, just. But I just not job interviews. No, that's not a good time to do it. Yeah, I don't know. It's just... Because it's not saying you've got a nice body. But figure. What a lovely figure. What a wonderful figure. What a juicy fig! What a ju- I don't know. See, I I don't have much contact with uh, females, so I kind of lose track of what's acceptable. But I never really used to take much notice of what was acceptable. But I probably could have done with doing more of that. And. Uh, Anyone that knows me knows that I'm just going to say whatever I say and to not really take me seriously because it's just I like to mess around and play, be playful. But uh, I just want to tell you that you got a splendid, <laughs> a splendid figure. I don't know, it sounds silly, but, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm I'm looking at my stats. You've got a lovely set of stats. That'd be weird. So, I do have some nice stats. I'm very impressed with my stats. The stats, I would say, my stats are growing as we speak. Literally, you know, one of the good things I like to do is after I've uploaded a couple of podcast episodes, I just go to the stats page and I just refresh it and just see how many people have just literally started playing and downloading the episodes, the various episodes on the podcasts. And you know, just in, I can do something in ten minutes, and I go back, and like, I've had a hundred downloads. It's like, wow, this is groovy. I like this stuff. It gives me a little buzz, isn't it? Weird. I generally feel good, um, and I think that's important. Not that I feel good looking at stats. Those stats. Oh. It's I'm doing something that feels good, and I, I think it's important that we all do that. Find something that feels good, that's not harmful to us or others, and just enjoy it. 
yeah so I'm sitting at the laptop my phone goes it doesn't doesn't leave it's not like walking out the door of a suitcase it's not, it rings and I answer it I look at actually I look like we all do I looked at the screen first I thought oh god which I probably would have thought that anyway because I just got out of bed I answer the phone I go what what do you want that was my friend and she said oh hello I said yeah well, what's up what do you want I said nothing just thought I'd just give you a phone up for a chat Oh God! I said, like, I just got out of bed. Uh, the last thing I want to do is chat. Just, just generally, just like I don't think I'm gonna. I've got it in me to have a conversation right now. And so that's how I felt. As so I thought, I can't. I have to speak to you later. I can't. Just like I wouldn't be able to do this first thing in the morning. Just after getting out of bed. Just, just like uh, a bit of uh, that. And then I asked her how she was. Which, one of the downsides of that is sometimes they tell you. And as she was speaking to me, I could feel my brain being stimulated. It's like the lights are being turned on. You know, it's... Uh, I talk about it in some of my sessions. The idea of when you're going to sleep, it's really a case of... It's like being in a big office block and you turn the lights off floor by floor. And I've done that. I used to be a security guard and I used to work in some buildings and it would be a case of going around each floor, turning the lights off, closing all the windows, making sure the fire doors are all closed, making sure all the taps are turned off and the toilets are unblocked, you know, all that stuff. And then by the time you get down to the, the bottom floor, you're really tired, you know, but everything's kind of been switched off. It's like turning your mind off. Well, this is kind of the opposite thing that happened. It felt like the lights were being turned on. And... I don't know, because she was... I don't know what it was, because something she said, and it stimulated me. Stimulated my brain. And I wanted to help her. And I turned into this Mr. Positivity. I started because uh, it was to do with coursework that she's doing and she's having a little bit of trouble with it and I just I started uh, turning to her like Mr Motivator just you can do it you can do it and I I kind of surprised myself because I didn't know that was that was going to happen because I really thought I just needed to get rid of her and so at least I'd have a cup of coffee or you know just got myself awake and maybe speak to her later on in the day but I ended up being on the phone probably about half hour 40 minutes and It was a nice conversation. I, th I hope that it was useful. What I said to her, what I spoke to her about, but that's that's up to it means you can. You can't make anybody do anything, so I can't. You know, I gave her some tips, a few bits of help. I mean, I've been, I've got a degree, I've been through the process of doing dissertations and stuff essays and so I've got a little bit of experience with that and 
I'm also a very focused person. So I know that, I don't know, I suppose I just got, you know, I've been 49, you know, 49 years of experience. I can pass that wisdom down to my friend, who's also 49. And she, yeah, that's it, she went. And then, I, what did I do then? I had my breakfast. I watched a video on YouTube, which since I'm doing more and more of this lately. I'm watching um, motivational, inspirational, personal development, um, positive videos from motivational speakers, interviews with successful people, all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm really doing. And I used to do this years ago. Not the successful people thing, and not on YouTube because it didn't exist back then. But I used to listen to uh, self development tapes back in 1997 and onwards for quite a few years actually. And I never really stopped. I mean, I still. I've been listening to them for a long time, but not as often as I did. I mean, in 1997, I was listening for hours each day. And then... I think in the early 2000s, I was doing sales, and I used to listen to a lot of sales tapes, sales CDs you know, inspirational, motivational, stuff like that, as well as reading um, motivational books. So, you know, so this is, it's not new, but I just seem to have upped the ante a little bit. I've got no idea what up the ante. I know what it kind of means as far as I've, you know, I've increased what I'm doing, but anti, I'm not sure what an anti is. I know what an anti is, and I suppose an, an anti is a northern anti. So I'm not sure. And I'm a member of Audible, which is a, it's an online audio book uh, platform. You, it's like online. They've also got the app as well, you know. And how it works is you pay a certain amount each month, and you get one free. You, you basically you get a token, which you can use on any book, whatever the cost it is. So if the book is, if it's, um, like I've had a, f- a few over the years, uh, the best of, let's say, less of, the best of Les Brown or the best of um, Jim Rohn, more collected works, and it lasts for like 50 hours, and it would have costed like 80, 90 pounds, then I spend the token on that instead of spending it on a you know £12.99 book audio book but then they have special offers and really cheap you know cheaper books as well but if the stuff that I like is the motivational stuff not really interested in reading or listening to other books at the moment anyway I want to listen and get as much positive stuff into my brain 
this uh, for me this medicine it's medicine it's just important so I yesterday I got the the magic of the magic of thinking big I think it's called by Schwartz something Schwartz The Magic of Thinking Big now I, I've read this book I think a couple of times but it's a long time ago it's like early 2000s and I don't have that book anymore but I got the audio and it lasts about 9 hours I'm loving it I listened to it when I went out because you don't use data to listen to it it basically downloads it onto your phone because you own it forever so it's downloaded and then you just listen to it so I don't have to when I go out I don't have to use the data at all which is really cool and I doesn't take up that much room even though it's nine hours it's still condensed as mp3 it's not um, a huge amount of space because I guess they know what they're doing don't they they know how to how to make files small so I've got that so I've been listening to that and uh, I like to listen to Bob Proctor as well and he talks about uh, it's all positivity he talks about that The Secret uh, stuff like that and Earl Nightingale uh, Napoleon Hill so I like to listen to them as well so some of these they're kind of they're, they're old well they're not around anymore you know they've been it's like a long time ago I listen to Jim Rohn and he's, he's not here anymore but it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant it's I couldn't recommend him enough Jim Rohn R-O-H-N J-I-M before and it's funny the way he talks is funny as well he's just got this certain way of um, stressing certain words and stretching some words out it's very um, it's entertaining to listen to not just what he's saying but even the way that he's saying it is so entertaining it's kind of somehow musical it's very nice I do I'm very a big fan big big fan of his and I never discovered him until recently really I was a fan of Zig Ziglar back in the late 90s and I listened to quite a few you know like Anthony Robbins and I'm trying to think of what other ones but Anthony Robbins was like the number one motivational speaker I think in the world uh, probably still is but he's yeah there's quite a few and I, I want to listen to more I'll listen but I did listen to one recently and it talked too fast I couldn't listen yeah Zig Ziglar doesn't talk quiet doesn't talk slowly but he's got he's got the type of voice the type of accent that I enjoy listening to Jim Rohn stretches his words 
So he's not talking slowly, but he slows down. Then he talks, and it's it's very artistic, um, artistic. And he, I listened to this other person, and I forget his name, and I've thought about listening to him for ages. And I had a little listen, and I thought, oh no, no, just didn't fit right. His voice didn't sit well, which is quite unusual because. I'm generally quite okay with anyone's voice, but his just didn't, I think maybe he's just talking too quick. I think that was the thing. What other people? The Pete, the person that did the book, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Uh, One of them, he's, I had a, I had one of his recordings back in what was it, 2005 I think 2006 oh, I forget his name is it Canon Can something Canston something like that he's so good some of the things that he was saying was just like wow just blowing me away so it's this, and that's what does me a little bit because I thought perhaps I can be a motivational speaker. <laughs> I should better say that without laughing, but maybe I could do something like that in the future and do something inspiring. But then, how? how can I compete with someone that well all of them talk much quicker than me and I know that I I exaggerate my slowness sometimes with these recordings I did one where it took me about an hour just to, to say a sentence now when I Flush the, and it comes really slow, but I exaggerate that sometimes. But the speed that I'm talking now is my pretty much my natural talking speed. It would speed up more when I'm talking to somebody because my brain gets activated in a kind of uh, it's like a duel you know it's kind of uh, like a bit of a sparring session but like a mental verbal sparring session so I kind of become a bit more active and a bit more verbal and I'm thinking uh, faster but my natural state is this to feel relaxed and just to talk at this speed I'm not I'm not talking I'm, maybe I am talking a little bit slower than I would normally maybe but by very little there's not a lot of difference and I know that it's not going to be suitable for everybody especially in a motivational uh, seminar because I've been to an Anthony Robbins motivational seminar back in 2004 I think it was it might have been 2006 and people were jumping up up and down on their chairs and I think every at least every three minutes 
Anthony Robbins was shouting out whatever then say I and everyone would put their hand up in the air going I and I think that meant yes and I was at the back pretty much of the of the hall and there was 10,000 people in there it was a big big event and it was in London I think London's Docklands and I'm pretty sure there was big screens either side of the stage so we could watch what was actually going on because he we could, I could see him I mean he's about nine foot tall so you know you can't miss him he's 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 a big lad so I could see him but he was still his auntie on the screen he was on the, the big screens and it was a lot of real excitement and I just thought I was thinking if I did something like that would that dra drain the energy and people would just be falling asleep bored and that would kind of be the opposite to an energising positive inspiring talk So I don't know, because, you know, I was talking to somebody recently that was saying that I'd quite like to do something like that, but I'd like to do it as a successful person. I'd like to do it, you know, as a, to inspire in a sense of saying, well, where I've come from and the uh, difficulties and stuff then and I've managed to come out the other side nearly 50 you know nearly 50 I've managed to come out the other side as a success and be able to give a talk from that perspective because I don't know I can't I feel as so well, you know, I can go on stage and say, well, you know, I've been through all this stuff when I was younger and then, you know, had the mental health stuff and and you can be like me and you can end up being unemployed. It's like, it's, it's not, it's not a... As I say in the business, it's not necessarily a happy ending. It's it's not the... I don't know how motivational that will be. But, you know, I have a little... That could be the... That could be my little tag. My little tag in rhyme on the poster. Be like me. Watch daytime TV. You know, it's, I don't know. But then my friend said, yeah, but you are successful. You're helping people all around the world from your home. You got, you know, and you're still dealing with this condition that you got. And but you're still focusing and helping people. So that uh, is a success, which was lovely to hear, but I don't know if I'll be able to convey that on a stage unless it was aimed at people with bipolar or something. I'm not sure. And then I thought, well, perhaps a lot of 
these motivational and inspirational speakers, they they work off the back of a book, a successful book. So they'll get a book published. Um, for you know whatever it is called you know um stop smoking in in 15 years or i don't know this whatever special diet for short people is i can make you grow three inches in three weeks i get emails like that all the time I'm thinking, how do they know? How do they know that I need such a product? But it would mean writing a book and I know that, well I believe that there is a book in, not inside me, that would give me heartburn there's a book in my talkings in my talks in my podcasts there's a lot of hours worth of stuff there a thousand odd hours or whatever and amongst that there's probably a few quite good little nuggets that could um, be taken out and put into a book format and then expanded upon and polished so I don't know It's that would mean listening to all my recordings not all of them but listening to a lot of the recordings And I don't know if I've got the patience to do that. It's a lot, a lot of work. It really is. So I'll see what happens. I'm going to try to do the uh, transcribing and I've got I actually got some transcribing software and I transcribed an audio mp3 from one of these recordings and it all it was just jumbly it was just it, I, I read it admittedly there was no full stops or any kind of punctuation a lot of the words were spelt wrong or just the wrong words but it made no sense. And then I realised that all the words were spelt wrong. And it just is exactly correct. It was just me that wasn't making sense. And that didn't happen at all. It was just... I looked at it and it was... I don't know, it's kind of like... For me, it would be like reading a book written in Chinese and trying to guess what's being said on the page by the picture on the front. You know, it's... it's I'd be quite interested to learn Chinese. Especially the writing. It looks fascinating. Just, uh, I don't know, just, think, just looks incredible, really. The way it is presented. It's very beautiful, isn't it? Like, 
of Chinese, Japanese, um, Siamese. It's kind of various different types of writing. You like Sanskrit, um, Lebanese. Uh, I don't know Vietnamese. I suppose it's all different um, writing and. Yeah, I find it quite interesting that so many different writing, so many different you know, books written in different ways. It's amazing, isn't it, really? You think how many different nationalities and how we've... It's such a small world, really. We manage to speak so many different languages and write in so many different ways. I wonder what things would be like if everyone just spoke one language. And I don't mean English, although that would be my preference because it would make it easier for me, but imagine if everyone just spoke one language whether it's Chinese or German or French or uh, Australian, whatever sort of language. I wonder what the world would be like if everybody just adopted that one language. I'd still talk in English. I think I'm too old to start learning a whole new language. I'm nearly 50, you know. So, I didn't get to really tell you about my day. So, I might get round to it another time but for now I'm going to say goodbye and I'll speak to you probably tomorrow take care of yourself remember to be kind to yourself Lots of love. Bye, bye.